Consider the story of the Israelites, guided by a cloud by day and a fire by night. While we may not have such visible signs, we do have something just as powerful, the Holy Spirit. Just like any meaningful relationship, connecting with the Holy Spirit takes time and commitment. But it's a journey worth embarking on. The key here is to start a dialogue, to open your heart and mind to this divine counsel. Remember, you're always worthy of this connection. Now, think about how our decisions align with the teachings of the Bible. God's Word is like a compass, always pointing us in the right direction. If your choice is in harmony with these teachings, it's a reassuring sign that you're on the right path. Let's not forget God also respects our free will. Sometimes He watches to see what choices we make independently. It's in these moments that a sense of peace and contentment can be a subtle nod of approval from above. This isn't about grand revelations. Sometimes it's the quiet assurance in our hearts that signals God's agreement. There's another approach, direct communication. When unsure, speak to God about your inclination, whether it's a yes or no. Ask for His intervention if you're straying off course. As Proverbs 3, 6 teaches us, Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will make your paths straight. This isn't just about seeking permission. It's about inviting divine wisdom into your decision-making process. Consider Jesus in the wilderness, led by the Spirit. His journey wasn't easy, but it was aligned with God's will. Similarly, the right choice for us might not always be the easiest, but it will resonate with our deepest truths and align with God's Word. In discerning God's affirmation, look for harmony between your decision, the peace in your heart, and the principles of the scripture. These are like threads in a tapestry, weaving together to reveal God's direction. This doesn't mean there won't be challenges, but amidst these, you'll find a profound sense of rightness, a confidence that you're walking the path God intends for you. When our hearts align with God's will, our decisions resonate with a sense of peace and purpose. The Bible illuminates our path, as Psalm 119.105 eloquently states, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. The scriptures are not just ancient texts. They are living words that speak into our circumstances, offering guidance and assurance. Proverbs 15.22 in the Amplified Bible provides a key insight. Without consultation, plans are frustrated but with many counselors, they succeed. This verse highlights the importance of seeking godly counsel. When we share our plans with fellow believers, their insights can often affirm or challenge our direction. It's as if God uses the wisdom of the community to guide us, ensuring we're not walking alone, but are supported by the collective wisdom of those who also seek His heart. Sometimes the path God leads us on might be fraught with challenges, it's easy to misconstrue these obstacles as signs of disapproval, but consider the biblical narrative. The heroes of faith often encounter trials, not as a deterrent, but as a part of their journey towards God's promises. Think of the Israelites' journey to the Promised Land, filled with challenges, yet ultimately leading to fulfillment. Now, let's shift our perspective on prayer and God's responses. Often, we view prayer as a request line to a divine figure awaiting a clear yes or no. But what if God's yes is embedded in the fabric of our experiences? As we grow in faith, we learn to make decisions, not in isolation, but in conversation with God. He delights in our steps towards growth, courage, and wisdom. When facing a new opportunity, if your heart's filled with a deep, inexplicable joy, consider this your heavenly yes. This joy isn't just happiness. It's a profound sense that aligns with the peace that surpasses all understanding, as mentioned in Philippians 4.7. However, remember in God's grand design, there are no wrong decisions. Every choice leads to growth and wisdom. A setback is not a failure in God's eyes, but an opportunity to learn and mature. The only true failure is inaction, to bury your talents out of fear and not embrace the opportunities that come your way. As you make your decision, 
Be encouraged. God is with you. Not as a distant observer, but as an active participant in your life's journey. Every step you take imbued with faith and courage is a step towards fulfilling your God-given potential. Remember, you are not alone. Let's consider the wisdom found in James 1, 2-3. This passage tells us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. This scripture isn't just about enduring hardships. It's about recognizing the transformative power of our challenges. When faced with a decision, if you find that your path, though difficult, leads to growth and aligns with your faith, it might just be that God is affirming your direction. Sometimes God's affirmation comes through the development of our character and resilience. It's not about the absence of challenges, but about growth and maturity blossoming from them. If your decision leads to personal growth, aligns with your values, and brings you closer to the person God intends you to be, these are potent signs that God's hand is in your decision. Philippians 4.7 offers us a beautiful promise. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When you're faced with a decision, and despite the uncertainties of the unknowns, you feel an inexplicable peace, consider it a divine signal. This peace, which is hard to put into words, acts like a compass pointing to God's will. It's a peace that doesn't mean everything is perfect, but a deep-seated assurance that, in the end, everything will be as it should be. Sometimes we're required to make decisions without having all the answers. If in these moments you feel a quiet, steadfast calm anchoring your heart, it's a strong indication that you're in sync with God's plan. This peace is like a gentle whisper from God, guiding you through life's complexities. It's also essential to remember that God's affirmations are not always grand or obvious. They might come through a conversation with a friend, a verse that speaks to you during your daily reading, or a subtle shift in your perspective. These small affirmations, though easy to overlook, are often where God's voice is loudest. Recall the story of Joseph in Genesis. His path, marked by unexpected turns and trials, led him to a place of influence and fulfillment of God's plan. Like Joseph, you might find yourself in situations that seem disconnected from your goals. Yet these are often the very circumstances God uses to propel you towards His greater purpose. Your current challenge or detour might be a divine setup, positioning you for something extraordinary. When interpreting these signs, it's crucial to anchor our understanding in Scripture. Verses like Proverbs 3, 5-6 remind us to trust in the Lord and lean not on our own understanding. As we align our decisions with His Word and character, we can be confident in His guidance. When you're contemplating a decision and a profound sense of peace envelops you, even amidst uncertainties, it can be a clear indicator that you're aligned with God's will. It's like an internal compass pointing you in the right direction. Reflect on the doors opening and closing in your life. Revelation 3.8 talks about God opening doors that no one can shut. Sometimes God's yes is mirrored in the opportunities that effortlessly come your way or in the obstacles that unexpectedly clear. Conversely, closed doors can also be God's way of saying, not this way. God will never guide you contrary to what He's revealed in the Bible. If your decision aligns with the principles and teachings of the Scripture, like the wisdom imparted in Proverbs 3, 5-6 about trusting in the Lord, it's a reassuring sign that you're on the right path. Don't overlook the significance of godly counsel. Proverbs 11:14 highlights the importance of wise guidance. Consult those who are spiritually mature, whose lives bear the fruit of their work with God. Often, God uses these individuals to provide clarity and confirmation. Remember, discernment is key. It's crucial to distinguish between our own desires and God's direction. Isaiah 40, 31 reminds us of the strength gained in waiting upon the Lord. In moments of stillness, when we lay aside our own understanding, 
we become attuned to His gentle whispers. And lastly, observe the resonance within your spirit. Romans 8.16 speaks about the Spirit Himself bearing witness with our spirit. When God says yes, there's an unmistakable confirmation deep within, a harmonic resonance that feels right. In life, when we're uncertain about our next move, the Bible serves as our spiritual compass. It's like a detailed map or a heartfelt letter from a friend guiding us through life's intricate pathways. It's in these sacred texts that we find the principles and values that light our way, ensuring we don't veer off course. Now, let's talk about recognizing when God is whispering a yes in our lives. Picture this, you're contemplating a new relationship, a career change, or even a move to a new city. You've prayed, hoped, and sought advice. But how do you know if God is indeed saying yes? Firstly, alignment with God's Word is crucial. Any decision that contradicts the teachings of the Bible is likely not a green light from above. God's affirmations are always in sync with His Word, never against it. Secondly, God often uses circumstances to speak to us. Let's say you're contemplating a new relationship. If the feelings are mutual, the relationship is healthy and it brings you closer to God. These could be signs of a divine yes. On the flip side, if doors keep closing, it could be a sign to pause and reassess. Remember, closed doors aren't always rejections. Sometimes they're divine redirections. Now consider this. God's timing is impeccable. His yes might not always align with our timetable. Patience is key. Waiting for God's timing can be challenging, but it's often in the waiting that we grow and learn the most. Moreover, peace is a significant indicator. Philippians 4.7 talks about the peace of God that transcends all understanding. When a decision aligns with God's will, a sense of peace often accompanies it, even amidst uncertainty. Also, don't underestimate the power of godly counsel. Proverbs 11.14 says, When there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. Seeking advice from spiritually mature individuals can provide clarity and confirm what God is speaking into your heart. I invite you to join me in a prayer. Heavenly Father, guide us in your decisions. Align our hearts with your will and grant us the wisdom to discern your affirmative guidance. Amen. Remember, your participation in this journey is invaluable. If this message resonates with you, feel free to express your affirmation in the comments with an amen. And if you found this enlightening, consider subscribing and liking this video. In the heart of the scriptures, there's a promise that whispers of a future so splendid it stretches the very bounds of our imagination. Picture, if you will, a dawn where the echoes of sorrow, the weight of despair, and the sting of loss have vanished like shadows at daybreak. This isn't merely a fleeting dream, but a divine guarantee of a realm reborn, where every tear is tenderly wiped from our eyes, not by mortal hands, but by the Creator Himself dwelling amidst His creation. This concept isn't just a figment of imagination. It's a profound assurance given with a depth of love and commitment that's hard to grasp. It's like being told that no matter the journey, there's always a place for you at the end of the road, a haven of rest where you'll be embraced and welcomed home. The essence of this message is simple yet profound. There's a space reserved just for you, a sanctuary of peace where you'll finally fit in. Without questions, without judgments, just pure acceptance. Now, let's put it in terms we all can relate to. Imagine coming home after a long, tiring journey. The lights are on, the doors open, and inside, everything is prepared just for you. This isn't about luxury or grandeur. It's about the warmth of knowing you're expected and cherished. In this place, your heart finds rest and your soul finds joy. For you're no longer a traveler, you're home. This promise comes from a source of ultimate love and truth, 
offering not just a temporary shelter, but a permanent abode in the embrace of the divine. It's a reminder that amidst the chaos and the noise, there's a path that leads to tranquility and eternal fellowship. This path isn't hidden. It's laid out by the very essence of truth and life itself, inviting us to step forward, to trust, and to embrace the journey ahead with confidence. In a future penned by divine hands, an epic transformation awaits humanity, a universe reborn, shedding the weary skins of pain, grief, and mortality. This narrative, etched in the annals of Revelation 21, sketches a cosmos where the agony of today's existence is but a forgotten whisper. Where the Creator Himself mingles among us, erasing every tear with a touch as gentle as a breeze, yet as profound as the dawn of creation itself. Imagine stepping into a realm where sorrow and death have no dominion, a world saturated with the essence of peace, righteousness, and divine purity. Within this sacred tapestry, a city of unparalleled splendor descends from the celestial realms, New Jerusalem, a marvel of divine architecture, its dimensions staggering the mind and stirring the soul. This celestial city, vast enough to span from Miami's vibrant shores to Boston's historic lanes, stretching westward to Minneapolis's lively streets, down to the heart of Texas and looping back, serves as a tangible testament to the grandeur of what awaits. Yet the city's sheer scale, extending thousands of miles into the heavens, barely scratches the surface of its wonders. Imagine encountering creatures of a celestial origin, the cherubim, in this divine abode, with faces reflecting the diversity of creation, human, lion, ox, and eagle, and bodies adorned with eyes. They embody the omnipresence and omniscience of the divine, a vivid reminder of the Creator's unimaginable power and creativity. But the true essence of this revelation lies not in the magnificence of the city or the marvels it houses. It's the unparalleled joy of beholding the Divine Presence, to stand before God. To witness the Ancient of Days in all His glory is a prospect beyond the reach of our wildest dreams and the grasp of our most elaborate vocabularies. The very thought of such an encounter transcends the limit of human emotion and comprehension. The vision from Revelation 21 isn't merely an escape into fantasy. It's a beacon of hope, a divine assurance that the trials and tribulations of the current journey are but fleeting shadows against the backdrop of eternal bliss. It invites us to anchor our hearts in the promise of a future where the fabric of our reality is woven with the threads of divine love, peace, and eternal fellowship with the Creator. Let this vision ignite us in a flame of hope and anticipation for the day when the mysteries of the divine unfold before our eyes, when we step into a world reborn and stand in awe of the splendor that's been promised. This is the future that beckons, the future where every moment is a testament to the beauty and glory of the divine, where every heartbeat echoes the rhythm of eternity. In a world bustling with noise and myriad challenges, from the unpredictability of nature to the complexities of society. It's easy to feel lost in the shuffle. Yet amidst this whirlwind, there exists an unshakable truth, a beacon of hope that shines brightly, guiding us towards a profound understanding. This beacon of hope isn't something we stumble upon through our endeavors or achievements. Rather, it's a gift graciously bestowed upon us, wrapped in the fabric of divine grace. Ephesians 2, 8-9 illuminates this beautifully, stating, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Herein lies the essence of our journey, not in the pursuit of earning our way, but in embracing the grace freely given. Our world as we see it is a tapestry of events that can sometimes lead us to despair. Yet we're reminded that beyond the transient, there's a steadfast promise from the Creator, a promise that transcends our understanding and offers a glimpse into a future where peace and righteousness reign. Revelation 21, 1-3 Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone, 
and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Sketch is a vivid picture of this promise. A new heaven and a new earth where God's dwelling place is now among his people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. This vision isn't merely a distant dream, but a tangible hope for all who choose to believe. It calls us not to a life of passive waiting, but to active participation in righteousness, holiness, and obedience. For in living out these virtues, we align ourselves with the divine narrative, setting our sights on the inheritance of this new world, a world where our relationship with the Creator is restored and deepened. Such a future compels us to reflect on our present, urging us to live lives that mirror the divine love and grace that beckons us forward. It's a call to each of us, regardless of our background or past, to step into a reality shaped not by our own making, but by divine design. In this journey, we're not alone. We're part of a larger story, one that invites us to find our place and purpose within the divine tapestry. Therefore, as we navigate the complexities of life, let us hold fast to this promise. Let's embrace the grace offered to us, living in anticipation of the new heaven and earth promised to those who persevere. This isn't about adhering to a set of rules or striving for perfection on our own terms, but about accepting the gift of salvation and the promise of a future filled with divine presence and eternal peace. In the sacred words of Revelation 4, 11, it is affirmed, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. This verse unfolds the truth of our existence and the ultimate purpose of creation, which is to delight in the presence of our Creator. Consider the mysteries of the deep, where creatures beyond the reach of human eyes dwell in the vastness of the ocean living testimonies to the Creator's joy in creation. Such marvels, unseen by us, flourish in the sheer pleasure of the Creator. It's a glimpse into the eternity that awaits us, an eternity where pleasing God unfolds in a realm of unending peace. Imagine, if you will, a future where the tapestry of today's suffering, pain, sorrow, heartbreak, unravels leaving us in a state of perpetual peace. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Revelation 21.4 This prophecy speaks to a profound transformation from our present reality to a new divine existence. Imagine a life untouched by sorrow, where every form of suffering and grief is but a distant memory. As we look forward to this promising future, envision the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending from heaven, a bride adorned for her groom, a symbol of purity and perfection. This city represents the culmination of a divine promise, a place where peace isn't merely hoped for, but is the foundation of existence. Here in this new creation, the flaws and failures of our current world have no place. Instead, we'll inhabit a reality characterized by harmonious existence, where divine love and peace permeate every aspect of life. This new heaven and earth signal the end of the world as we know it, a world rife with turmoil and strife, replaced by a kingdom where divine peace reigns supreme. In this new order, every tear shed in the pain of loss will be tenderly wiped away by God Himself, providing comfort and solace to the weary and brokenhearted. This promise holds particular significance for those mourning the loss of a loved one, offering a beacon of hope amidst despair. The assurance of eternal life and peace through Jesus Christ stands as a beacon of hope, illuminating the path towards this new divine reality. As we transition from the temporary to the eternal, we're reminded to not cling too tightly to the transient aspects of this world. For in the grandeur of God's plan, a new way of living awaits us. 
one where the very essence of our existence is transformed. The one who reigns supreme from an eternal throne announces with authority that reverberates through the cosmos, Behold, I am in the midst of a magnificent transformation, making all things anew. This isn't just a fleeting statement, it's a decree, solid as the ground beneath our feet, assuring us that what is spoken is both faithful and absolute. He proclaims, Note these words well, for they are as true as they are steadfast. Imagine being handed the promise of a fresh start, a canvas wiped clean, where the source of life itself pledges to quench the deepest thirsts without demanding anything in return. This is the promise of Revelation 21.6, offering us the water of life freely, a gift from the Alpha and Omega. And to those who stand firm, a rich inheritance awaits, a future where we're not just subjects, but beloved children of the divine. Moving through the annals of sacred history, we encounter a moment of profound realization in the life of King David. Settled in his palace, he reflects on the dwelling of the Divine Presence, contrasting his own luxurious surroundings with the humble tent that houses the Ark of the Covenant. This sparks a divine dialogue, with God reminding David through the prophet Nathan, echoing the words of 1 Chronicles 17, 4-14 about his humble beginnings and the journey to kingship, a testament to divine guidance and provision. God's message to David is a powerful reminder that he is the ultimate architect of our destinies. He promises not only to establish David's lineage, but to create a legacy of peace and security for his people. This narrative culminates in a divine assurance of unfailing love and the establishment of a kingdom that will endure forever. It's a portrayal of God not as a taker, but as the ultimate giver, a theme that is beautifully encapsulated in Luke 6.38. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back, highlighting the principle of reciprocal generosity. God's economy operates on principles alien to our worldly transactions. Here, giving becomes an act of worship, a testament to our trust and gratitude. It's underscored by the assurance found in Malachi 3.10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it put me to the test. Where divine generosity overflows in response to our faithful stewardship, this is not a transaction, but a transformation, a divine exchange rooted in love and gratitude. Do signs appear when God is about to bless you abundantly? Saints, your life is in God's hands, and God has His timing for everything. The challenges you're facing now can't stop God's plans for your life. In reality, everything is happening according to God's timing for you. Remember what Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. In today's video, I'll share the simple yet important signs that God is about to bless you abundantly. Pay attention to these signs so you don't miss out on God's provisions for your life and destiny. We encourage you to watch the entire video and join in the prayer at the end to receive blessings for yourself, for your family, and your friends. Before we continue, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it at least once to help us reach more people. By doing this, you are spreading the gospel, changing more lives, and advancing the kingdom of God here on earth. It's important to know that God truly wants to bless you. Your current situation won't last forever. God has a plan to lead you out of your present situation just like He did for Joseph, Daniel, and Paul. God excels at helping His children through any situation when they stay faithful to Him, no matter how tough things get. The great thing about life is that the ending is always the most beautiful and interesting part of the story. God is a great storyteller. He is telling a story with your life. Have you ever thought about how Joseph might have felt in prison after the scandal with Potiphar's wife, or while waiting in prison after interpreting the cupbearer's dream? 
At that point, Joseph might have felt abandoned by God, but God was about to bless him in a big way. Similarly, my friend, God is about to bless you. Don't give up now. Believe in him. He is about to come through for you and bless you. So you might have doubts, but he will definitely come through for you. Consider what scripture says about God's thoughts compared to human thoughts in Isaiah 55, 8-11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Today, dear child of God, I will share three signs that God is about to bless you. Before we continue, sit back and relax, and then listen to what the Lord has for you. The first sign joy. The first sign that God wants you to notice when He is about to bless you is joy. Many people don't realize how powerful joy is. If they did, they would never want to be without it. Often, joy is the key that sets you on the path to the blessing God is preparing for you. Sadly, many people allow Satan to steal their joy. If your joy is stolen, you are truly robbed. The Bible emphasizes the importance of joy in the last part of Nehemiah, 8.10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Friends, God is the true source of joy. Satan cannot give you joy. In fact, his main goal is to steal your joy. On the other hand, God provides joy and ensures that it lasts forever. This scripture also confirms that joy gives us strength. The reason many believers have the strength to deal with life's challenges is joy. When you have joy, you have the strength to face life overcome difficulties, and emerge victorious. You can conquer the challenges that come your way and appear as though you've never been through them. You can stand tall, even in the toughest situations, as though you are the most powerful being on earth. The key thing to note is that if you have joy, you are well on your way to overcoming life's challenges. This is a sign that God is about to bless you. When you sense the absence of joy, God's presence will also feel distant. Joy indicates that the Lord's presence is active and His blessings is near and about to be revealed in your life. When you have joy, you have God's support and blessing because joy is the fruit of His Spirit working within you. Many times, when the children of Israel faced battles they couldn't win with ordinary weapons and strength, God instructed them to turn to Him in praise. Each time they followed his command, they were filled with joy and achieved the victory they desired. In Joshua 6, 1-27, the walls of Jericho fell after the Israelites marched around them, blew their horns, and shouted. Joy brought them victory. What about the battle where God commanded the people not to fight but to sing instead? It sounds weird, right? Jehoshaphat's army praised the Lord in song as they approached the battlefield, and the Lord caused the enemy armies to turn against each other. By the time Judah's army arrived, the battle was already won. Once again, joy proved to be the key to an overwhelming triumph. If you desire this kind of victory or blessing, pay attention to joy. Don't let the enemy steal your joy. Those who praise God and serve Him with joy make themselves candidates for His blessings. This truth is echoed in Deuteronomy 28, 47 through 48. Because you did not serve the Lord your God joyfully and gladly in the time of prosperity, therefore in hunger and thirst, in nakedness and dire poverty, you will serve the enemies the Lord sends against you. He will put an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. These verses highlight the importance of serving the Lord joyfully, especially in times of prosperity. Failure to do so might lead to serving enemies in times of adversity. Now that we've seen joy as the first sign God is about to bless you, let's consider the second sign. The second sign, peace. The next powerful indicator that God is ready to bless you is peace. Have you ever noticed how God, in His Word, repeatedly assures His children of the gift of peace? 
It's not just any peace, it's the peace of God. A clear sign that His guiding hand is upon you. When God leads, He does so with peace and blessings surely follow His guidance. In Psalm 37, verse 11, the Bible beautifully depicts the path of God's blessings. It says, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. It tells us that the meek will not only inherit the land, but will also experience both peace and prosperity. Friends, God is actively working in your life, steering you towards a blessed destination. He knows every challenge that might come your way, yet His promise to us is unwavering. He will grant us peace in every circumstance. Philippians 4, 7 reinforces this truth, stating that the peace of God will safeguard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Consider the peace of God as like an umpire in the game of life. Imagine a hockey match without an umpire. It would be nothing short of utter chaos. The umpire ensures order by regulating the game according to its rules. Similarly, when God assures us of peace, He guarantees that our lives won't be chaotic. Instead, His peace will bring order and place our minds in the right state. And when this peace settles in, it often brings along prosperity, the very essence of His blessing. Now that we've explored peace as a significant sign of God's blessings, let's transition to the final sign that God is on the verge of showering His blessings upon you. The third sign, Thanksgiving. The third remarkable sign that God is on the verge of pouring out His blessings upon you is Thanksgiving. Often overlooked, the power of gratitude in inviting divine blessings is truly extraordinary. Thanksgiving in its truest form involves expressing gratitude to God, acknowledging Him as the ultimate giver of every good gift. Jesus, our ultimate teacher, consistently emphasized the importance of thanksgiving throughout Scripture. Whether He was feeding the 5,000 or standing at the tomb of Lazarus, He exemplified thanksgiving. This underscores a crucial lesson. When God is about to manifest His presence, an essential element is a heart filled with gratitude. In Mark 8, 6, we witness Jesus giving thanks as He miraculously multiplied the loaves to feed the multitude. This serves as a powerful example for us. Giving thanks isn't reserved for specific occasions, but should become a continuous and intentional practice in our lives. Consider this, even when you don't necessarily feel like giving thanks or you find yourself in the midst of chaos, let your heart express gratitude. Offer your truest form of praise and acknowledgement to God. The act of giving thanks, regardless of circumstances, becomes a subtle yet profound sign that God is orchestrating miraculous blessings in your life. So in conclusion, always keep in mind these three signs that precede the miraculous hand of God. Joy, peace, and thanksgiving. Be purposeful in cultivating joy, embracing peace, and consistently giving thanks in your daily life. These practices serve as an open invitation for God's blessings to manifest in your life in wondrous ways. Now join me as we pray this heartfelt prayer to the Lord to receive His blessings upon our lives. Pray it with faith, believing that He will hear and answer you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude for the precious gift of your Son, Jesus. We lift our voices to bless your holy name, acknowledging not only what you've done for us, but also the essence of who you are. Father, grant us the wisdom to recognize the signs that our breakthrough is drawing near, closer than we can imagine. Give us the gift of discernment so that we may align ourselves with your will at all times. Shower us with the grace to remain undistracted, especially in those moments when you are on the verge of blessing us abundantly. O oh, precious Lord, take our hands and gently guide us along the path to the blessings you have prepared for us. Lead us, dear Father, by the Holy Spirit into the fullness of all that you have in store for us as your cherished children. Dear Jesus, we hold on to the assurance that all things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Grant us the strength and grace to continually love you and walk in the divine purpose you have set for us. We ask for the grace to persist in unwavering belief. We express our gratitude, trusting in the confidence we have in you, knowing that when we call, you always answer. Thank you, Father. 
we present these requests in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Saints, if you feel the resonance of these blessings in your life, type Amen in the comment section below as an expression of thanks and anticipation for the blessings to come. We declare that the blessings of this prayer encompass you and your entire family in the name of Jesus. Dear friends, thank you for joining us and staying until the end. We encourage you to share your testimonies in the comments section and pass along this video to your loved ones who also seek the abundant blessings of God in their lives. Amen. It's easy to get swept up in the endless stream of responsibilities and pleasures. From the demands of work to the joys of family, from the pursuit of hobbies to the allure of social engagements, our days are filled with a multitude of distractions. Amidst this whirlwind, it's crucial to remember the central role God plays in our lives and the transformative power of placing Him first. Reflect on the essence of the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, 3. This isn't just a directive. It's an invitation to a life of deeper fulfillment and purpose. Imagine your life as a garden. Each aspect, be it your career, family, or hobbies, is like a different plant. While these are important, they should not overshadow the cornerstone of the garden, which is your relationship with God. Consider this analogy. Our journey with God is like navigating through a dense forest at night. We have a flashlight, our faith, that guides us. But the path ahead isn't fully illuminated. We move forward step by step, trusting that God's light will reveal the way. This journey isn't just about the destination. It's about the insights we gain and the growth we experience as we walk this path. In this journey, there are two kinds of travelers. Some are content with a brief glimpse of the divine, akin to savoring a small morsel of a grand feast. Others, however, yearn for the full experience, eager to embrace all the blessings and teachings God has in store. This desire for a richer spiritual experience is like choosing a bountiful feast over mere scraps. It's about embracing the fullness of God's promise and the abundance of His love. When we put God first, our perspective shifts. Challenges become opportunities for growth, and uncertainties turn into moments of faith building. This isn't about dismissing or neglecting other aspects of our lives. It's about prioritizing and aligning them with our spiritual journey. As Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Imagine standing at a crossroads, with multiple paths unfurling before you. Each path represents different priorities and choices. The path where God leads is not always the easiest, but it is the most rewarding. It's a journey of trust where each step deepens our relationship with Him and brings a sense of peace and purpose that transcends worldly directions. In a world saturated with humanism, where the self is glorified and God's truth is often sidelined, we find a growing epidemic, an epidemic of self-centeredness. This self-focus, however, comes at a price. It leaves a web of worry, resentment, and bitterness not just in our minds, but manifesting in our physical well-being. It's like carrying a heavy backpack every day, filled with rocks of our own making. But here's a revelation. We aren't bound to this path. The transformative power of placing God first reshapes not just our lives, but our very being. When God leads, Decisions are no longer rooted in fleeting feelings or societal pressures. They become grounded in His wisdom, offering a peace that surpasses all understanding. Consider this. When we honor God in our decisions, our lives become a testament of His grace. The shackles of selfishness break, allowing us to experience a life rich in compassion, integrity, and moral clarity. Our choices, once a source of stress and inner turmoil, 
become a source of joy and peace. It's like watching the sunrise on a new day, filled with hope and possibilities. Putting God first isn't a one-time decision. It's a daily act of surrender, of choosing His will over ours. It's a journey of small steps, of daily choices that collectively steer our lives towards a horizon of hope and fulfillment. Each decision, each action, when filtered through God's wisdom, becomes a stitch in a beautiful tapestry of a life well lived. Let's not forget, this transformation isn't just personal. It radiates outward, touching the lives of those around us. Our families, friends, and communities feel the ripple effect of our choice to put God first. What starts as a personal decision blooms into a collective revival and upliftment of moral standards and attitudes. Let's picture a seed planted in fertile soil. The seed represents our lives. When we surrender our lives to God, we are like that seed, buried in the soil of God's love and wisdom. It might feel like a sacrifice at first, being buried and hidden away. But just like the seed, it's in this surrender that we find our true purpose and begin to sprout and grow. You might ask, but isn't this just about being holy? It's more than that. Holiness is the blossom, but trust and surrender are the roots. By offering ourselves to God, we're not just avoiding wrong actions, we're actively seeking direction in every aspect of our lives. It's like choosing a path less traveled, trusting that it leads to a greater destination, even when it seems uncertain or unpopular. In a world constantly shouting for our attention, urging us to conform, to blend in, to follow the crowd, Romans 12.2 urges us otherwise. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's like standing at a crossroads. One path leads to familiar territory, the way everyone else is going, while the other path is less clear, guided only by faith and trust in God's promises. This choice to put God first can seem daunting. The world often tells us, Take control, make your own way. It whispers that waiting on God is a thing of the past. But remember, faith is about believing in the unseen, trusting in the promise of a harvest, even when the seed is just being planted. As we embark on this journey, we are promised transformation, a renewing of our mind. It's like seeing the world through a new lens, colors more vibrant, possibilities more abundant. This transformation enables us to discern God's will, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Let's choose the path of faith. Let's put God first, trusting Him as our guide, our compass. It's a journey of transformation, of growth, of discovering our true purpose under His guidance. And in this journey, we find a life that's not only pleasing to God, but fulfilling to us, brimming with hope joy and peace. As we move forward, let's hold on to this truth. When we put God first, our lives begin to change in ways we never imagined, blossoming into a story of faith, hope, and love that inspires not just us, but those around us as well. True success is found in the inner prosperity of the soul, the kind that comes from knowing you are walking in harmony with God's will. It's about feeling a deep-seated joy and peace that doesn't waver in the face of life's storms. How does one start this journey? It begins with a simple yet profound declaration to God, I can't do this without you. It's an acknowledgement of our human limitations and an invitation for divine strength to work within us. It's a commitment to rely not on our own understanding, but on the wisdom that comes from above. But what if we stumble? What if we falter in our walk? Here's where the beauty of God's grace shines brightest. Our missteps don't define us. Our willingness to rise again does. Proverbs 24.16 reminds us, Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. So, 
If you find yourself straying from the path, don't be ensnared by discouragement. Confess, learn, and continue forward. God's grace is sufficient for every mistake, every challenge. And remember, it's a journey taken one day at a time. Each day is an opportunity to partner with God, to tackle life's challenges, and embrace its joys with Him by your side. Together, there's nothing you can't face. So, as you navigate the complexities of life, remember this profound truth. When God is first, everything else falls into its rightful place. Your life begins to reflect a deeper purpose. Your actions resonate with eternal significance, and your heart finds the peace it has always longed for. This is the transformation that awaits when you choose to put God first. Consider the story of Abraham, a man who chose to walk with God habitually, as mentioned in Genesis 17.1. His life was a testament to what it means to prioritize God above all else. His journey wasn't easy, but his unwavering faith led to blessings that were not just for him, but for generations to come. That's the beauty of putting God first. The impact goes beyond our own lives. Now, think about the times when you've tried to handle everything on your own. It's exhausting, isn't it? In Isaiah 42, 8, God reminds us that He is unique, unparalleled in His majesty. He doesn't share His glory because it's His signature in our lives. When we try to do everything independently, we miss out on the beauty of His work in us. The Bible, this extraordinary compilation of divine wisdom, offers solace and strength. It's a treasure trove of guidance. Have you ever read a verse that seemed to speak directly to your situation? That's the living Word of God at work. As Romans 12.2 suggests, His Word can transform and renew our minds aligning our thoughts and actions with His divine purpose. But how does this all translate into our daily lives? It's about starting each day with a prayer, a simple conversation with God. It's about reading the Bible, not just as a book, but as a manual for life. It's about seeing every challenge, every decision, every moment as an opportunity to trust and glorify Him. When you make God your priority, life doesn't magically become perfect, but your perspective on life changes. You start seeing challenges as opportunities for growth, and you find peace even in the midst of storms. You become a beacon of hope and inspiration for others, showing what it means to have a life anchored in faith. Putting God first means making Him the cornerstone of your life. It's choosing to start each day with a prayer rather than scrolling through social media. It's about replacing moments of worry with trust in His plan and replacing fear with faith. It's about filling your heart with God's words, letting them guide your decisions and interactions. This doesn't mean life becomes devoid of challenges. Rather, it means you face these challenges with a different mindset. With God as your compass, you navigate life's storms with a sense of peace and purpose, knowing you're not alone. As we conclude, let's say a prayer together. Dear Lord, guide us to always put you first in our lives. Help us to find strength in your word and to live every day with the knowledge that you are with us. Amen. If this message resonates with you, I encourage you to express your affirmation by commenting Amen below. In every nook and corner of your life, unseen companions walk beside you. Unseen, yes, but their presence is as real as the air you breathe. Each one of us walks through life with a guardian angel, a silent custodian whose sole purpose is to guide, guard, watch, and provide support through the journey of life. Imagine, within the walls of your home, these benevolent watchers could be mingling, leaving subtle clues of their visits or continuous presence. But how can you tell if one of these benevolent beings has graced your home with their presence? 
There are ways to sense their nearness and steps you can take to become more attuned to the whispers of their wings. From the very outset of creation until the present moment, the saga told by the Holy Scriptures unfurls a narrative of divine safeguarding, a vivid demonstration of God's ceaseless vigilance over His creation. It's as though each leaf, each syllable, resounds with the pulsations of the Creator's essence, proclaiming, Your worth is immense to me. The shield of God's protection isn't transient or ephemeral, but an everlasting embrace that surrounds you with arms that neither weaken nor waver. In epics of chaos, in instances of doubt, it's crucial to remember that you are neither overlooked nor abandoned, for you are held dearly, guarded with a fervor by a deity whose affection is limitless. Therefore, as you navigate through life's low valleys and ascend its utmost peaks, let this profound realization be the anchor for your spirit. The safeguarding embrace of God is your birthright, His attentive care your unceasing ally. There exists no shadow too dark for His light to penetrate, no abyss too deep for His love to reach you. Across every hurdle, through each victory, the Sovereign of all creation stands by your side, advocating for you, reminding you of your value through His gaze. You, cherished one, are a radiant jewel in the diadem of the Almighty, a living testimony to His mercy and might. Within the vast epic of eternity, your narrative holds importance. Your existence carries weight because you are of consequence to God. The world or those within your immediate circle may overlook your value, but in the eyes of God, you are indispensable. Consider the real-life stories of individuals who, against all odds, found their worth and purpose through faith. Think of those who stood firm in their convictions, even when the world turned its back on them, only to realize that they were never alone. Their stories, much like yours, are not lost in the cacophony of life, but are highlighted by the divine reinforcing the truth that in the grand scheme of things, every life has a purpose, every soul has value, especially in the eyes of God. This story isn't about selling an ideology or promoting a commercial venture. It's about speaking truths with the authority and conviction that comes from genuine belief. When we speak from a place of deep conviction, our words carry weight and power, resonating with those who hear them in every word we speak, we convey this message with the sincerity and passion it deserves, ensuring it touches the hearts of those who listen, guiding them towards the light of this enduring truth. Consider the marvel that, even as you tune into this message, your living space might be graced with the presence of at least one such guardian. Reflect on the beauty of this notion. Recall the words from Psalm 91, 11 and 12. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Picture the highest levels of earthly protection, like the secret service assigned to the president. Now think of something even more profound, your own celestial guardians, assigned just for you. What a magnificent thought! to be cherished and protected in such a manner. In the eyes of bureaucracy, individuals might be reduced to mere numbers or statistics. Yet, you are infinitely valuable to the divine. The ultimate sacrifice was made, sending a beloved son so that eternity could be spent together. And during your time on earth, celestial watchers stand guard. It's a poignant reminder of your worth in the grand tapestry of existence. There exists skepticism, even within certain faith communities, about the existence of angels or the supernatural. This skepticism, often rooted in a modern rationalist approach, overlooks the rich spiritual tapestry described in biblical texts. Ignoring these aspects means missing out on the fullness of spiritual reality and guidance that's been affirmed through ages. Throughout history, 
There have been moments when the divine reached into the lives of ordinary people through extraordinary means. Take, for example, a story from ancient times when a man named Lot found himself in cities steeped in wrongdoing. These cities, known for their profound moral decline, caught the attention of the divine. In response, messengers from the heavens, often referred to as angels, were dispatched to Lot. Their mission? To deliver a warning of impending doom and to guide him and his loved ones to safety. This event, captured in the tale of Sodom and Gomorrah, highlights the pivotal role these celestial beings played in safeguarding human lives. These messengers, appearing in the guise of travelers, were welcomed by Lot. Demonstrating profound respect, he greeted them with the utmost humility. Their message was clear. Escape was necessary to avoid the impending disaster. Despite the urgency, hesitation lingered until the messengers took decisive action, leading Lot and his family by hand away from the brink of destruction. This narrative, while ancient, echoes a truth that transcends time. The divine continues to watch over and intervene in human affairs. This intervention is not relegated to the past. The presence of these divine guardians in our lives is a continuous promise. They move unseen, tasked with protecting, guiding, and intervening on behalf of humanity. Consider the imagery of a ladder connecting heaven and earth, a bridge between the divine and the mundane. It symbolizes an ongoing interaction, with celestial beings constantly moving between realms to fulfill their divine directives. Among their duties is the safeguarding of individuals and families, acting as unseen protectors within our homes. Many might question the existence of such beings, attributing their survival of near misses and dangers to mere luck or coincidence. However, the accounts shared in sacred texts offer a different perspective, revealing a world where spiritual beings actively participate in our reality. Imagine for a moment if our perception expanded beyond the physical, revealing the intricate dance between the seen and unseen. Such a revelation would undoubtedly transform our understanding of the world around us. The narrative of Lot and the constant guardianship provided by celestial beings serves as a reminder of the spiritual dimension that accompanies our everyday existence. These stories are not just relics of the past, but are reflective of a profound truth, that we are not alone. The Divine has not ceased to send messengers who tirelessly work to protect, guide, and watch over us. Whether they acknowledge their presence or not, they are a constant, a reminder of the spiritual protection that surrounds us, often unnoticed, as we navigate through life's challenges. As we reflect on these truths, let us recognize the spiritual reality that envelops us. The next time you face a trial or a moment of uncertainty, remember the story of Lot and the angels. Let it remind you of the unseen guardians that walk among us, offering protection and guidance. While their presence might be invisible to the eye, their impact is felt in countless moments of grace that guide us through life's storms. In recognizing this, we open our hearts to the profound mystery and beauty of the Divine's involvement in our world. In every corner of your home, from the softly lit bedrooms where dreams are born, to the bustling kitchen where meals and memories are made, there's an unseen presence. This isn't about the fleeting shadows or the whispers of the wind. It's about the guardians assigned to us since the dawn of our first breath. Yes, I'm talking about angels not the cherubic figures on holiday cards, but mighty protectors, divinely appointed to stand by our side. Jesus himself, in the heart of the scriptures, shares a profound truth with us. He speaks of the little ones, not just children by age, but anyone with a heart pure and open, saying their angels are always in the presence of the divine. Matthew 18.10 This isn't a fairy tale. It's a promise of protection, 
a testament to the fact that you are never alone. Why does this matter to you? Because in a world that often feels like it's spinning out of control, knowing you have a guardian angel provides a blanket of peace. These celestial beings are the silent watchers, the keepers of peace, always advocating for your well-being before the Almighty. Let's delve into a profound truth, a timeless declaration from the scriptures found in Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This assurance is our inheritance as the devoted followers of the Almighty. But what does this actually mean for us? It's a divine guarantee that the hurdles and adversaries we encounter will not have the last word. Yes, challenges will arise, symbolized as weapons, and they will aim to bring us down. However, they won't succeed. They can't, because the Most High is on our side, meticulously overseeing our journey. This doesn't mean we won't face trials. It means that these trials won't define our destiny. Even when adversity hits, there's a purpose. Sometimes the difficulty we face is intercepted by divine intervention, disarming our foes. Other times, we're allowed to face these trials head on. Yet, remarkably, what was meant to harm us is transformed into a catalyst for our growth and a testament to our resilience. We emerge not just unscathed, but enriched, with stories of victory that inspire and uplift. Recall the story of Joseph, who, despite being sold into slavery by his own brothers, saw God turn his misfortune into a powerful story of redemption and salvation. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, Joseph acknowledged. It's a striking reminder that our current struggles are not the end, but a turning point towards something greater. This narrative isn't just history, it's our story too. We face modern battles, be it in our personal lives, careers, or spiritual walks. Yet, amidst these, we hold on to the promise that no adversity has the power to defeat us. This assurance doesn't come from our strength, but from an unshakable faith in the one who controls the universe. So, as we go through life's ups and downs, let's remember the essence of this divine protection. It's not just about surviving, it's about thriving. It's about seeing beyond the immediate challenge and recognizing the bigger picture, a tapestry of our life being woven by the divine. Let us carry this assurance in our hearts. The battles we face are real, but so is our victory. It's guaranteed, not by our might, but by the promise of the one who has never lost a battle.